Hey everybody, Rob Satch from Feedback Ranch. I want to talk to entrepreneurs and people who are thinking of starting a business right now. And it's because I keep connecting with so many small business owners, whether you're a construction person, contractor, home service company, or I have all these accountants and financial services folks. And basically what I want to talk about is what does it actually take to start and grow and build a real business. And this is just meant to be an encouragement. So this is all about entrepreneurship and how do you go from absolutely nothing to building something significant. And I wanna hit on some things because, boy, I hear a lot of terrible advice out there. And right now when I scroll through Facebook, I scroll through Instagram, all I see is all these gurus doing lead magnets and telling you how they're gonna help you get a business up. Well, you know the dirty little secret? We do websites, we do branding, messaging, strategy, paid ads. We help businesses create a steady flow of leads and we help them actually get established and create something that's fantastic. Our goal is to create something over a couple of years where they're going to absolutely dominate their local regions, their industry niches or whatever it is. And we get results. If you go look at feedbackrench.com, check out all the websites that we've done. We have over 92 five-star reviews because we actually get it done. And there's millionaires across the Twin Cities that we've helped build because of what we've done in their space and to help them with sales and marketing and get them doing that. So I've started two businesses. I have Feedback Crunch. I've been doing this for about six years before that. I have Nuance Financial Tax and Accounting. So I started a, an accounting firm. It grew to be a, a million dollar, multi-million dollar accounting firm. Then my partners and I had disagreement. We separated. Then I started Feedback Crunch and we've been growing consistently. We're having a lot of results. So I'm going to be putting this on our podcast. If you if you look for us on the podcast, Feedback Ranch Podcast, you can see that here. Um, you can go into YouTube and I don't know, I don't really do anything else, but I'm so busy. I haven't been able to create content. So anyways, I want to make this because I keep finding all these folks that want to start businesses and they get all this terrible advice. There's so much opportunity for them to actually get it done. And I want to talk about what that is. And so I want to use a quick analogy, right? And in a way, if you think about it, entrepreneurship or sales is really all about finding people who have a problem and providing a solution to that problem. And in a way, you're kind of like, you know, in McDonald's, you have to get people to actually buy a hamburger from you. And then you have to actually make and have a good operating, not only the, the hamburger, but the process of getting the hamburger needs to be done. You have to have people there. You have to have sales and execution. You have to find people that have the problem and then you actually have to solve that problem. And whether if you're in an accounting firm, um, you know, you need to find business owners that need their taxes done. They're stuck in a, in a situation. They, they need their taxes done. They have ugly books and you're going to present a better future for them. And you got to intersect with people that have that problem. You need to build relationships with them. You need to be in proximity of them. And once you find people that have that problem, by golly, the next thing you're going to want to do is show them a solution and have a, a have an outcome for it, right? If you're doing concrete patios, by golly, you have to intersect with new homeowners that want to put a concrete patio out there. You need to show them the options and have them and then actually build them good patios. And, and so what I want to talk about here is there's an analogy where I know a lot of really smart people who know a ton about business, who have big degrees. A lot of times they're like CPAs. They might be very knowledgeable about business and yet they never actually go in and start. They never actually do it. And there's a number of reasons why. One of the reasons why is because it usually takes time to build credibility in your own mind. It takes know-how to actually get the customer. You have to believe in yourself to actually know that you're a good solution. If you don't believe in it, you're never going to do it. And not only that, you have to go out and actually like do the front end activity to get there. And what I want to talk about is, to me, it's a lot like fishing. I'm going to use a couple of analogies here, and maybe it's helpful for you. So entrepreneurship to me is, there's two of them that I really like. One, it's almost like being a fishing guide or a fisherman. And here's a, here's a little story. When I was growing up, so I'm 40 years old now, and the year's 2022. And when I was growing up, I grew up in the suburbs of Minneapolis here, and we had a little lake called Man Made Lake. And it was basically an old gravel pit from the 70s that had been filled in. And it was just this rinky-dink little pond, and I loved fishing. I, I had a buddy who said, hey, man, if we go out there, and we can catch a bunch of fish. And we'd go out to this little pond. I, I, I'd get my little bike, this BMX bike that I had, or this really corny-looking Murray mountain bike, and I'd put my red, red what is it, the, the red wagon behind me with a black handle. I'd tie it on with a rope, and I'd pull it behind my bike. I'd throw my tackle box, way too much tackle, I'd put a fishing rod in there. We'd go out down the road here in our backyards, and I'd go to my buddy's house, and we would dig up worms. And we didn't go buy anything. We dug our own worms. 
We'd bring the worms with us, and then I had some tackle, and it never really worked. We'd ride our bikes about a mile and a half down the road to Man Made Lake, which is now Valley Park Lake, and we would go there, and there was this one spot next to a culvert where if you put a hook and a bobber, you just put a worm on a hook and put it in there, you would catch sunfish immediately. And growing up, it was actually quite a robust area. You would catch big sunfish. It was super fun, Um, and there was only sunfish, like maybe every once in a while a bullhead, but we never had the experience of having real Minnesota fishing. If you know anything about lake fishing here in the Twin Cities or in Minneapolis or Minnesota or up north or anything, it's walleyes and northerns and big crappie and all this. We never knew any of that. All we caught was sunfish. Well, one day I get invited to go to my uncle's. Um, he had a lake and, and well, his, his in-laws had a lake and we went to this lake And I remember me and my cousin Trevor, we jumped in this little paddle boat. And Trevor really only knew what, he had a stream in his, in Decorah, Iowa. He only knew small fish too. I only knew how to catch sunfish. I never really caught anything but sunfish. I had my regular day-to-day catching sunfish. I had no idea anything about catching anything else. We get in this little paddle boat. We go off and we saw these guys in a boat. And all of a sudden we look up and these guys are pulling in northerns. And they're like, Like, being a grown-up now and doing a little bit of fish, they're not very big northerns, right? But to us, they were monsters. I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to catch that. So I was like, okay, I got glasses now, if you didn't notice. I turned 40. I'm old now. I can't see straight. And uh, I'm watching these guys, and they're using these, you know, they're they're casting out, what do you call them, Um, a jig with a spoon on it, right? And they're reeling it in, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I have one of those. I've never used one. I'll get it. The guys disappeared as I was tying it up. And so I tie up my 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 little spinner bait, my spinner, what do you call them? They, they got like rubber bands on them or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do this. Like, all right, let's try it. And I throw it in once and I get a bunch of weeds. I'm like, oh, shoot, weeds, I don't want that. So I put a bobber on this stupid thing. So I throw a bobber out there and this spoon is sitting on the bottom. Nothing happens. I didn't catch a northern that whole time until all of a sudden I just caught one. And I'm like, sweet. And it was like, it was game changing. It was like the biggest fish I had ever caught in my entire life. Okay. So here's what I'm talking about. Here's how this relates to business. In a way, creating an outcome for a customer or providing a solution and actually having that solution occur is kind of like catching a fish. You're producing fruit, you're getting fish, you're, you know, all the analogies that the Bible uses too. Like the idea is you're actually making something happen. And to a degree, there's a lot of folks that sit and watch people. They work on a boat that does fishing. They're part of the crew that does the fishing, but they never actually pull all the pieces together to make it happen. And so what was interesting for me is I never knew how to do that. Now, if I were to approach somebody and say, hey, can I take you fishing to go catch some northerns? And I had no experience of actually catching northerns. I didn't know how it is. Now, do you catch northerns every day? No. Like I've also I've gone out with wise, competent northern fishermen. So so fast forward to a wise, competent northern fisherman. I marry in to a family who uh, Earl is just like the coolest dude ever. And they had a cabin up north, and he knows how to fish and hunt and do everything. And he's got a proper fishing boat, and he's got a proper lake up by Alexandria. And I go out with him. I've never had so much fun in my life. I hadn't caught a northern up to this point for like this is fifteen. 10, 15 years later, right? And we get in his boat and we start trolling back and forth with Rapalas and the Rapalas, the Shad Raps are going, boom, I'm getting hit with Northerns that make that other one that I caught and the other ones I saw minuscule. They were teeny. Well, here, Earl is the guide. He knew what to do. I've fished a bunch with Earl. We don't catch fish every single time. That's why you call it fishing and not catching, right? It's why you call it marketing and sales, not just like, money transfer, right? Um, there, There's a process to this. There's a sportsmanship to it almost. And when you're getting started in entrepreneurship, you have to remember that if you don't actually know how to go out and create a solution, if you haven't put together a nice little package, a good solution, a good outcome to people, you're never going to win. And you're never going to have very much luck. So I always recommend when people are first getting started, find a way to just get some repetitions and get started by catching some fish. And that usually means starting to connect and find people who have that problem. Because ultimately, when you're in sales, you're in entrepreneurship or business ownership, you're finding people who are stuck in a problem and you're going to provide a better future moving forward that the outcome is fantastic for them. So you're finding people that are stuck here and you're helping them get 
there. And not only are you helping them get there, but you're going to make that process fantastic. You're going to make the onboarding good. You're going to make the process of doing it good. You're going to make sure that the outcome is of high quality and all of those different things, right? But ultimately, you're really, you're kind of like Yoda. They are like Luke Skywalker and they don't know how to use the force and you're going to show them how you can make their life better. Well, in order to do that, you're going to have to go find people that have that problem. And in the beginning, you should probably be candid about the level of competency, experience, or whatever it is that you have in terms of providing that solution. If you're new, by golly, go out and find people with the problem and give it away for free or do it with them or offer offer to do it for cheap. Get repetitions under your belt because when you do that, what you're going to find is as you gain more repetitions and more experience of actually doing it, suddenly you're going to have the competence inside of you, the confidence that you're competent and you'll have the belief inside of you that you can actually do that, that you know you could ask your little buddy to come alongside you and come fishing with you and by God, there's a, there's a chance we're going to catch a northern, right? But if you would have went northern fishing with me back in the day, you would never catch anything, right? Now, there's certainly, like, when you're creating these solutions, just like fishing, you kind of, you don't need a boat, but it's helpful if you have a boat. You don't need a rappel rigging and a couple reels and rods. You don't need equipment. You don't need gear. But by golly, it's a lot more helpful. And it's the same thing when it comes to your marketing, your operations, your team, your equipment, anything that goes into providing that solution. It's not that it has to be done. Like, you can go catch northerns with corn out on the corner, but you know what's a lot easier is to have Rapalas in a boat so that you can actually do it. You have a higher success rate, right? So you have to concoct an operation that, that actually works and, and can get done. But in the beginning, what you have to do is at its most core, go out, find people with the problem. And we're going to talk about that for just a second. And get repetitions of just actually helping people get that problem solved and and. Do it for cheap or free. Now, when you're doing it, make sure that you have a Google review profile, a Google business profile. And when you have those results, go garner a Google review that shows that you actually delivered something. You might even ask them, um, what would you do different? Was, was that a good experience? And sometimes if you're doing a tax return, you know, that's one thing. If you do your first, you know, you go get your general contractor's license, and you're doing your first concrete patio or maybe your first um, roofing job, right? Um, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can partner with other companies that need outsourced solutions, right? So it's really hard for people to get reps if they don't have any customers. You might be wondering, wait a minute, I don't really have anybody that I can call that have that problem. How do you get your first people? Usually the easiest way to get started in all of these is to get a job in that industry, right? It's much easier if you go join a company that looks like the type of company that you want to um, create. And you might not even know exactly what you want to create, but if you want to get started, the easiest way is to get a job in the industry, in the type of company that you want to become so that you can see what it looks like to actually be in the business of doing this. That's one way that you can get initial um, action going. Another thing is, is I would recommend that you start having coffees with mentors or people. So one of the things that you should do is call people that are in the business, call people that are business owners, call people that are potential customers down the road and say, hey, I just got a question for you. Could I call you for 15 minutes? I have a couple of questions. I'm thinking about starting a business in the next couple of years. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a concrete company. I just wanna know what would be important to you and I'd love to just pick your brain a little bit. I have a couple of ideas, but I'd like some perspective. I know that wisdom comes from getting perspective. You could provide your insight and I would value that. Would you be cool connecting? Or if it's somebody that, if it's a competitor, just be like, hey, you know what? I'm thinking of getting a job in your industry. <laughs> kind of wink, wink. Thinking of taking over your industry. Um, I was wondering if I could call you and just talk about what you do, what you've learned, what you're looking for in good team members, and sit down and take notes. And, and as you gain more perspective in all these industries, all of a sudden you're going to be in a position where you can truly, truly know what it takes and, and have the confidence Externally, I just got to make sure I got a meeting coming up here. Um, have the confidence inside of you that you can make those solutions happen. Because if you don't believe it inside of you, you're not going to do it. But ultimately, there's a time where you got to go out and you got to make sales. And this is one of the things that people don't get is there's a lot of smart, competent, able people that are inside of corporations that will never be an entrepreneur, will never be a business owner because they never actually pull together the pieces of their own fishing operation. They never go get a boat. They never leave the current boat and fishing operation that they're on 
to go out and do some stuff, get their own rowboat in the beginning and just do some rinky-dink, one-off, some side gig hustle. They never actually do it. And in a lot of ways, um, they, they forget that what it's truly all about is finding people that are stuck, providing that solution. So you got to go do that. Go get those coffee meetings. Ask great questions. So if I was in front of, so I would go get, I would call, try and find the business owners of competitors that would be in your area or outside and just call them and be like, hey, you know what? I'm thinking of starting. I know you're busy right now. My name is Rob. I was wondering, could I just get some perspective from you? I know you're a business owner. I'd love to hear what got you there. I wouldn't want to waste your time. Could I Could I do a 30-minute phone call with you sometime in the next couple of weeks here? I just want to get perspective because I'm thinking of starting a business. What business owner doesn't help someone like that? We all do. I help people like that. Every successful business owner I know in small business and entrepreneur, they would all take that phone call, but not very many people call us. And that's why there's not very many business owners. And that probably tied to the education system. People don't even know it's an option. But um, eventually, if you get that activity, you got to connect and be around people. If you found somebody that you think could be a potential customer down the road, rather than get up on them and slime them and be like, hey, you know, and I want to sell you something. I'm going to fake it till I make it. No, go in there and be like, hey, I want to, you'd be a perfect client someday. I'm going to build a business. I was wondering, what would you be looking for in a solution like this? What do you think would be really important? Do you have any insight for me? Like, what would you tell me to build so it'd be something you'd actually want to buy or something, a service you'd want to get? And again, if I'm thinking of becoming a remodeler, you remodeled your home. What was really important during that process? How would you stack all the all the benefits that went into it? What's been your experience through all this? And just drink it all in so you understand because ultimately you got to go fishing. Um now, the other thing, I was just talking with a guy who really felt like he didn't have the abilities to create the cheeseburger, to create the hamburger, to create the solution. There's certainly some head knowledge you need to go get, right? You need to go learn how to do the blocking and tackling the simple things of your business. For accountants and bookkeepers, you need to go learn how to set up QuickBooks and do accounting. You need to learn how to gather documents and fill out tax forms and file tax forms. You need to get through the legal stuff too, but you need to know how to set up and run a payroll. A lot of times, professional services, you need to learn how to actually do the thing, right? There's value to that. Go learn how to do that. But here's the deal. You don't need to go to school for that. You can go to udemy.com. You can go to LinkedIn Learning. You can go in and on YouTube. You can acquire the skill to actually do that. And then you can give it a shot and pretend. Invest in yourself to learn how to solve problems and to provide the types of things that are out there. Shoot, if you're in the food business, start making food. Learn how to do it really well. If you're in the in the remodeling business, by golly, go subcontract until you really got it figured out, right? Um, so activity and action and actually catching those northerns in that pond and trying to do that is going to be the first thing. The other thing on this head knowledge part is there's a lot of people that, it, it, I'm going to switch to analogy of sports now. There's a lot of folks that know all about basketball or they know all about football, American football. Um, and they know all the players, they know all the rules, they know the the length of the court, they know the length of the football field, they know how everything works. And then there's a lot of people who will even go get in really good athletic shape. But there's a huge difference between knowing about football, knowing how to be a football player, and then actually going out and giving it a shot. Okay, In basketball, I know a lot of people that they know everything about basketball, but They don't even know how to go shoot and play around and enjoy it themselves and enjoy the game and do layups and shoot and run around. And then when when it comes to actually playing a game of basketball versus just shooting around, they never do it. If you don't go get in the game and actually try it, you got to get in the game. You're not going to ever make it. There's a lot of people that even work on basketball teams, you know, that know everything about basketball, but they they never leave to start their own team. They never start their own profession. They never do. So there's a huge difference, and there's a lot of smart people that know a lot of things, but ultimately there's this part where, you know, if you're going on a journey down a river, this is like analogy land, right? And it's a big, scary river. I always think when Frodo and Samwise Gamgee in The Lord of the Rings, they're about to leave the rest of the group, right? It's right when, uh, what's his name, Boromir, I think, or, or whatever the guy betrays Frodo, tries to take the ring, and Sam and Frodo, Frodo tries to run away on his own, and Samwise is like, I'm coming with you. And there's this point where they have to go in that boat and push off. And they don't know where they're going. 
They know a mission. They have a mission, but they don't know where they're going. And once they push off, there's no turning back. You can't go. There is a moment in this thing where you do that, but be careful. I meet a lot of people that they, they get everything lined up. They get really smart about their business. And then they think they're going to quit their full-time job and go replace their income. You're an idiot if you do that. Don't do that. Build up a side gig. Build up a side hustle. Do something so that you know how to catch these fish before you go and probably get to a point where you've got your own side hopper going and you can actually make some of those shifts, maybe divest in your full-time and go part-time with your main employee. Maybe make your main employer your, your first contract, right? Um, but eventually you have to you do have to push off. And that's fueled by sales. Without sales, there's nothing to do. 80% of all your time, your effort, your money, your thinking, your activity, your words, 80% of it needs to be in front end activity. That's networking, calling, making phone calls, call a hundred people a day that are a potential customer. And this is what I really want to hammer on. Without sales, your plane is grounded. Okay, I love the analogy that sales and marketing are the two engines on a plane that create thrust and lift. You can have a cool business plan, a great brand, a cool website, all sorts of operations, equipment. You know, you can have sweet cameras and you can have all the gear in the world. You can even know everything, but until you put gasoline in those engines and get going, you will stay grounded. And I know too many business owners that sit around waiting for their engines to turn on. What fuels your business is sales and marketing. Now, marketing, we do digital marketing, we do online marketing. There's so much you can do right now in digital, but you can't negate the in-person or video-based, people-based side of sales. If you want to get a business going, here's what you must do. You must prospect. You must get in front of as many people as you can and create a mathematical inevitability that you will have success. The insurance business teaches this big time, okay? In the insurance business, the first thing they do, if you ever, <laughs> Northwestern Mutual guys, brace yourselves. In the insurance or the multi-level marketing people, this is what they do. You recruit somebody, they make you take a spreadsheet and they call it your Project 300. You write down every person you've ever met or intersected with or have a relationship with. You write that down and then you systematically call them and present to them the idea that you could possibly do their insurance and investments, right? Now, on your end, if you're doing B2B, it's a little bit different. Um, if you're doing home services, it's a little bit different. You, But there's video versions of this. But you can call, right? I have a roofing guy or a siding guy or even a remodeler or, or a junk cleaning. You can do B2B commercial work. You can call on every contractor and say, hey, next time you need a roof, get me in on it. I'll, I'll do a better roof at a better rate because I'm hungry and I want to make this happen. So make sure you call me. I know you have a guy, but anytime you need more capacity for your roofing when you're doing new construction, call me. Like What, what builder is not going to give that a shot when you confidently call in and professionally engage into these people? So I'm not saying do the Project 300 like that and then you kind of slurp you know, slough around. No, you're going to professionally call on businesses and people and corporations and potential people that are stuck here. You know, they're stuck there, right? And you're going to provide them a solution or an opportunity to come and, and possibly do business with you. But be direct. Don't beat around the bush. Don't, hey, I was wondering if you can get coffee and maybe there's something. Like you do want to have coffee meetings and get to know people, but you need to be purposeful in it. They don't want their time wasted. If there's a reason why you're calling them, get about it. Call them, hey, I'm Rob. I do websites and marketing. I'm right down the road from you. I'm not sure if you have a really good like lead generation system and website and video. I'd love an opportunity to see if there's some way I could add some value. Would you be interested if I shot you an email or anything like that? Could Would you be interested in talking about that? Nah. Like that's the worst that's gonna happen and boom, I'm on to the other one. So the idea is you have to get that front end activity. There is a movie out there called The, the Founder. And it's the story of Ray Kroc, the person who took the McDonald's brothers and McDonald's hamburgers upward and forward into the stratosphere and made McDonald's what it is. And he was a, he was tenacious. He was a, he was a honey badger, man. He, he was a wolverine. And those two animals are two animals that I've really been thinking about lately. 
because they are absolutely tenacious. They don't require a lot of food. They're small. They're scrappy. They get things done. That that is like the tone of how an entrepreneur needs to think. You're like a wolverine or a honey badger. You hit harder than your size. You make the most out of every calorie you have. You know how to barrel down for the winter. Look at a wolverine. They run miles and miles. You do what it takes to get it done. You'll eat bone if you have to, but you'll kill a deer if you can. Like no matter what, when it comes to entrepreneurship, you need to be a wolverine. That's a new thing I got. You got to be a wolverine. Go watch the documentary on a wolverine. They're insane. Fight off bears. Kill. They'll eat anything and everything. You need to be like that, right? But in Ray Kroc's movie, what he talks about, when you watch what he did is he took that model and he just persistently brought it forward. He was selling milkshake machines to restaurants. And when he saw that model, he has a quote in there about persistence. If you persistently do the front end activity and persistently get in front of enough people and persistently find out if they have the problem and persistently present yourself as a solution to the problem, if you do that persistently enough and with enough volume, you will win. You cannot keep it down. You cannot stop it. You will have a successful business. And when you buckle into that, you'll succeed. When you believe that at its minimum, you become somebody who absolutely makes it happen. You take it. You go take the opportunity. You go out and you obtain the clients. You find them. You call them. You go to network meetings. You go to their house. I don't care. Whatever it takes, you go get them like a wolverine. And you'll eat anything that comes your way and get reps and build reputation. You will get it done. But Ray Kroc says that nothing can stop persistence. Nothing. And so I think you don't have to be low value, cold call, all of that. But at minimum, you can. And it will create activity. It will fill and put gasoline and create some lift into the airplane of your business. It is the thing that allows you to, it's like going on the water for fishing, right? If you go out on the water and make enough casts, if you're stupid casting, you will actually catch something. You will catch something on accident at minimum. At best, you'll get good at this. So if you're starting a business, that's the attitude you have to have. You're not going to sit back and just let this occur to you. You're going to go take it. Now, there's some specific things that we'll continue to do in our courses and in our training, on our podcasts, on our YouTube channel, and when you work with us to make sure that you actually get it done because I think entrepreneurship is a solution. Government programs, government bureaucracy, jobs and big corporations, all of that, that's not the solution. Go out and create. Create value. Go find people that are stuck and provide solutions. You can make great livings doing it. You can have fun. It can be passion-filled. It can be exciting. Good luck. God bless. Give us a call. Go to feedbackranch.com if you need help. Book a consultation. We'll get your business up and going.